Welcome folks, episode 4 of Inside IU Softball coming your way right now. Jimmy Cavanaugh joined by Hoosier head coach Michelle Gardner, fresh off of a trip to Tempe, Arizona this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Team got a lot of sun, got on dirt for the first time, played a few games. I guess just talk about, to lead things off, what you saw from this past weekend. Two big wins, three losses against three of the top 25 t- teams in the country. Just what you took away from this weekend of performance. Well, I think, you know, we opened up with ASU, and obviously it was the first time on dirt. I I felt like we were a little nervous and probably a little jazzed up um, because, you know, we'd been out during the day, but, you know, it's the first game. And there's always jitters when it comes to that. I thought we made, um, we kind of went in with a game plan, which was to lay off her rise ball, which we laid off her rise ball, but then she kind of ate us up with a curveball, and we didn't really make adjustments, but you know, had some key errors and had some things happen that were just unfortunate, but I don't really think the score was indicative of the game. That being said, you know, we had a couple things that I felt good about going into Saturday then, you know, we opened up with Bradley and opened up big in the first inning, which was amazing because we do have striking power. It's, and you know, you kind of, everybody hit in that game. So that was kind of just a, a wonderful thing to see and while we still gave up too many runs, you know, I felt like we settled down and, and did some really good things. I'm really glad you talked about that game against Bradley because your girls scored 11 runs in that first frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first inning total took almost an hour, uh, and mm-hmm. most of that was you guys just going to the plate again and again and again. Mm-hmm. It's not fair to expect that on a regular basis, but what right. does that say? about the offensive capability and potential of this team? Well, it, it says a lot because, it, you know, we had a couple of people who had multi-hit games. Um, we had a home run. Uh, you know, we, we, we really put the ball in play and made them make plays. And, you know, I just felt very good after that game that, you know, that's, a, that's the potential that we see on a regular basis. And to after the loss against ASU, to come out and do that, I, I was really thrilled about that. And then if we want to talk about individual performances, if we want to get to the other side of the ball in the circle, Laura Olson had a great game in the finale of the tournament for you guys. She pitched seven shutout innings, helped you blank Portland State 7 nothing. How big is it to have a pitching performance like that this early in the year? Last year, your team only had four total shutouts, mm-hmm. none until late in the month of February. First weekend of the year to have a shutout has got to mean something. Well, it, it says a lot. It says a lot for Laura and, you know, the work that she's done in the off season. And to be quite frankly, we, you know, we'd given up quite a few runs on the weekend. So I, I actually had started low against uh, Stanford. And, you know, she kind of cruised through a little bit and then got into trouble. And I made a pitching change and, you know, things just kind of got out of control. But all in all, I felt like she had a good weekend on the mound. But just ending the weekend with that was, was wonderful to see because, you know, this, this game is a lot about the circle. And, well, I thought, you know, Megan struggled a little bit. She's going to come around. And, and Brooke had, obviously had some issues with some illegal pitches, which we're working on that. You know, for the most part, I felt pretty good about uh, moving forward. I, I feel like we, we saw some really good things. And now it's just a matter of building on it. And, you know, what's difficult now is that we go in and out and in and out. We come home. We can't be outside yet. We're going to go play outside. We can probably come back home, be inside next weekend, then we're going to go back outside. That's that's a little difficult in itself, but, you know, they, they made good adjustments because it's also different when you're pitching inside on turf and then you get out on the dirt. So I thought Lowe made real good adjustments, and obviously that was a huge boost for our team to come home with two wins. And, and like you said, the two wins were against teams that, you know, they're good teams, but we were able to put our things together and unfortunate that we didn't put anything together against the top 25 teams, but I see that changing as this season goes along. And kind of switching gears here a little bit, I want to talk about an offensive performance individually, and like you said, a lot of the girls put some things together Mm -hmm. all weekend long, but Mm -hmm. Bree Saucedo, coming back from a foot injury against Mm -hmm. Ohio State, she missed the last really half of the year. Big Ten season. Steps right in and nine hits and 18 at-bats, just hitting the cover off the ball. How big is it that she steps right back in and fills that role? Well, I think it's huge. I think, you know, obviously she's our leadoff hitter. She's our table setter. And she kind of sets the tone for the game. 
And I, I really felt confident in her at the plate in every situation. Um, you know, she had a great performance. Bri Meyer had a great weekend also, and she hit 500 as well. So it's kind of, you know, and then I think here and there, we, we all the way through the lineup, I felt like, you know, there were things I saw that were really good, and there were things I saw that we need to work on. But those two kids were, kind of set the tone all the way through. And then we had, you know, good performances by freshman Cassie Farmer. I mean, Farmer hit the ball well this weekend. And so, and, you know, we're kind of moving things around a little bit. A lot of people saw the field, which I think is always a good thing in preseason when everybody gets a little bit of, you know, a little bit of time out there. But I, I still think, you know, we've got people in the lineup that need to be more successful at the plate. And I feel like we have some interchangeable parts, so that's a good thing. Had real good leadership, I felt, on the field. And, you know, Amanda Wagner had a good weekend. So if you look around and you can pick people out, all in all, we had quite a few kids that actually really had good weekends. Unfortunately, we gave up too many runs, but that's going to that's gonna get better as we go. Yeah. And now moving forward to this weekend, the Georgia Tech Classic in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You've got another five game in the three-day stretch, including uh, the final two against an undefeated number 24 Georgia Tech team. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys need to do to be successful in those games, kind of picking up on some of the points you've made before? Well, we need to be disciplined at the plate, which obviously that's how you're going to score runs. And we also need to not give up so many runs. Our, I, I think the, the big key for me is that, you know, because we give up a hit, we don't give up two or three hits. We give up one, and then we hold them to what we can. So we have to have good defense. We, we made some defensive mistakes this past weekend that I don't foresee us making in the future. But again, it goes back to the first weekend out, first time on dirt, you know, kind of all of those things. And so I really feel like we can compete this weekend, but we've got to come out and do it every game. And it's got to start early. And then, you know, yes, Georgia Tech's a very good team, but, you know, if we can put our put our game together, we can beat them. It does indeed start early. The first game, folks, is going to be 10:30 against Miami of Ohio. Really early start. Going to have a good time in Atlanta. We're going to see if the Hoosiers can put together a couple of wins. That's all the time we have here, folks. Be sure to check out all those broadcasts on iuhoosiers.com. Like I said, starting 10:30 Eastern time against Miami of Ohio. For head coach Michelle Gardner, I'm Jimmy Cavanaugh saying good night. Travel well, folks. This has been Inside IU Softball. Thanks for watching.